Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. You're watching Indigo Tech Tutorials. If you're new here, please press that like button and subscribe to the channel. It'll help me out a ton. So in this video, I'm going to continue on the Airbnb series and I'm actually going to build the Android app. It's going to be really exciting and let's get right into this. So the first thing I'm going to do is just open up our Airbnb Rails app and I'm going to start that server up. I'm going into my Ubuntu console and I don't know if I'm using Redis, I can't remember. I don't think we really are using Redis, but I'm going to make sure that that server is running. And then let's go into the app and I'll start the server using bin slash dev. So now that the server started, I can view the app on localhost port 3000. So just like this, everything looks good. So I'm going to try to sign into my account. Indigotech at Gmail, and there we go. We're signed into the account. So these are actually all my listings, so I can edit them and everything. And it's looking good, I can create new listings. Yeah, everything is set up and cool. So from here, I'm gonna start creating the Android app. So to do that, I'm gonna go over to Android Studio. So I'm just gonna open up Android Studio, and then I'm gonna create a new project by going to file and then new new project and then what I'll do is I'll do it with no activity just because we don't really need any of these like you can have these uh, templates to get you started but I think it'd be better with no activity and then we can just create the activity that we're going to use so now we have to set the name of our app I'm just going to call this Airbnb and then you can change the package name. I'm just going to leave that how it is and save location for the language. Make sure that you're using Kotlin and the minimum SDK should be at least 26. And it says your app will run on approximately 95% of devices by using the minimum of 26. So that sounds pretty good to me. The other thing you can do is make sure that the build configuration language is Kotlin DSL which is the newer setup compared to the Groovy DSL. So we're gonna use Kotlin DSL. And after we've configured that, we can just press finish, which will create our app. So I think it's actually creating it in a new window. Yeah, let me exit out of this one and pull open that other app. Right. I wanna terminate that. All right, cool. So looks like our app is generating right now can't really tell okay down at the bottom right corner there is some information like it's installing some files but cool so from here i'm just going to go right into installing the turbo android framework onto our android app so to do that i'm just going to go to the turbo android github and i'm going to find the installation docs so I have it pulled up right here. It's on the hotwired turbo Android GitHub. And then we'll see what we have to do. So basically you just add a dependency to your apps module file. So we're gonna add this implementation. So for the module, it's inside of the Gradle scripts folder. And then right here, the build Gradle KTS. You'll see that there's two, but we're gonna select one for the module and the module one has way more stuff inside of two. So like if you look at the project one, there's nothing there, but the module has all this, these different uh, things. So we're just gonna add right down at the bottom to the dependencies. We're gonna add this implementation and it's gonna be the dev hotwire turbo. Then we have to put the latest version, which right now it's 7.1.3, which I'm trying to type, there we go. And you can see the latest version right here on the GitHub. It's showing up right here on Maven Central. And if you also just look up the like this name dev.hotwire turbo, you'll be able to find it too. As we can see, the latest version is 7.1.3. That looks good. And then there's also the required min SDK. We already handled that when we were setting up the app. So we don't need to mess with that. And then also internet permission. So for the web view to access the internet and load the web pages from the URL, you have to have this permission for the internet. So to add that, 
we have to add it into the app folder in the manifest on the Android manifest. So this is like your main configuration file for your app kind of. So I'm just going to add it right at the top. Use permissions for the internet permission. Cool. And also because we added the new dependency hotwire to the Gradle file, we have to sync our Gradle, which basically means it'll install the new dependencies. So make sure that you click the button. If you don't see that blue pop up, it's also the elephant button up here. It's the elephant with the arrow. That means sync the Gradle files. Okay, so I ran it and now, oh, I was getting this yesterday. This is so annoying. It says could not read workspace metadata. All right, it's coming from this Gradle caches. I'm just gonna try to delete that because that's really annoying me. So I'm gonna try to go and find that in like my file explorer. Yeah, let's just go to this file. Gradle caches. I just want to delete that whole caches file. Like, there's really nothing that could be that important inside of here, in my opinion. So I'm going to delete caches. Screw it. Look at how much stuff there is in there. And then probably actually I'll, let's exit out of Android Studio. But I was literally trying to make this video yesterday and I was getting that error. And I was getting like another error in the, with my app. I don't know why. Why does it do that? It must just be an Android Studio thing. But look at how many items there are. 200,000 items from Gradle. That's insane. That's a lot of freaking items. I'm just going to let it run. And hopefully this doesn't, like, if it does ruin anything, everything, we could just reinstall Android Studio. That's like another option. Okay, it looks like it finished. We threw away all the cache data. Now let's open up Android Studio and see what happens. Okay, it looks fine. Now we're gonna try to sync our Gradle file. So I'm running the builds. And I'm just gonna hope that there's no error. Okay, cool, so that took like only a few minutes. Actually, it wasn't that bad. It was a lot faster than Xcode for building the iOS app, so I'll tell you that much. But anyways, I think that it finished installing, so we should be good to move on. I'm going to go from the installation guide over to the quick start guide. So right here on the quick start guide, we're going to get into this. We have to create this host fragment class. We're going to call it main session nav host fragment. This is a lot. I'm just going to copy that class name and I'm going to go and create the new class. So where we're going to put this is inside of the app folder, Kotlin Java, and then the name of your app, like the whole identifier. I even notice there's a few different ones, but the other ones are just for test. The main one is right here. There's not any like parentheses or like sub name on it. And then we're going to create the new class. So to do that. We can right click on this folder and go to new Kotlin class file. So I'm going to put the name as this main session nav host fragment, I guess. Now, I don't think you have to name it like that. You can name it whatever you want, but for some reason they just call it like a, whatever, a nav host fragment. <laughs> so we're gonna have this uh, host fragment. This is gonna be like the entry point kind of for our app. That's what it seems like, because we set the start location. We also set the registered activities. So if you have more than one activity in your app, and then real quickly, let's just import all these classes. So if if there's a class that's red, it means you have to import it. So to do that, I just press Alt Enter. And like I usually have to press Enter twice to just cl click on the top thing. Web fragment is actually a class that we're gonna have to create. So we're gonna do that in a second. And then for the start location, we're going to not use, this is going to the Turbo Native demo. So I'm going to switch this to use our local app. So to do that, you have to have this Elias IP. So in Android Studio, you can't just use like localhost 3000 like this. Because if you do that, then it's going to think that you're referring to like the local host on the phone. You know, because you're going to run this app inside of the simulator device. 
So you have to use this Elias IP, which is this 10.0.2.2. This will port over to localhost. And then we still have to use the port 3000 for our Rails app. All right, the other thing we can have to do is delete the remote file URL. So this remote file URL uh, doesn't exist anymore. I guess they like remove this path from the demo app. So this will cause an error if you leave this. So we're actually gonna delete that. And we have to use the local configuration file, but we're gonna have to actually create that inside of an assets JSON folder. So to do that, I'm just gonna right click on app, click new, and then folder. So this little like Android Studio folder, inside of there, there's the option for assets folder. So I'm just going to do that, leave everything default, press finish, and then what it does is it adds this assets folder inside of here. Then I can go and right click on the assets folder, press new, this directory, and I'm going to call it JSON. So that's just like a simple, just simple for folder. And then I'm going to click new file, and I'm going to create a configuration.json file. And this is where we're going to put that path configuration which we don't have, but I'm gonna open up this docs right here and get the little example for the path configuration. Whoops, it's right here. So this is like the most simple configuration that you can have. And the configuration is how your app will like know how to present each page that it loads. So it's possible to like present certain pages inside of a modal. And I want to get to that because I haven't done that in any episodes yet. And I would love to do some things in the configuration file just to explain it a little bit more. But now that we've set that up, we have the asset file set. We have that configuration file, which will load correctly. So we can move on. Oh, another thing real quick is we need to set Android use clear text traffic in the Android manifest. If we don't do that, then using the local host actually fails because we're not using HTTPS. And in Android with like the, all the frames and stuff that they're using, by default, it'll cause an error if you try to go to like a HTTP site without HTTPS. So we have to allow that by setting it inside of the Android manifest file. And we just do it right here on the application, I think. Use clear text traffic, true. Just like that. All right, so that looks good. We have this host fragment created. Now we have to create an activity. So create the turbo activity layout resource. So we need a resource file inside of a layout folder inside of res. So I'm gonna copy this code and then I'm gonna create that. So to create the layout, we're going to go over to res, which is right here in this main folder level. Res, we don't have a layout folder yet, but I'm going to quickly create it by right clicking, pressing new. And then we're just going to do a directory. I'm going to call it layout. And then inside of there, I'm going to do a layout resource file. And then oh, I always forget what they want me to call it. Activity main, I think. So I created activity main. And then now you kind of see like this view with this is like what the app would look like. Uh, so it's a preview kind of section and you can drag and drop all the different items. So this is kind of helpful if you're building Android screens that are fully native, but we're not really doing that right now. So to switch over to the code mode, go in the right corner and you'll see these three icons. So one is like full preview mode then they're side by side. And we start to see the XML code right here on the left and you can also go with the four lines, which just means full code mode. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace all of this code inside of here with the example code. The only thing we have to change is the Android name. See, it's trying to go over to its main session, Navos Fragment, which we don't have anymore. So I actually need to set that to our local one, which, oh, there we go. It kind of gave me a pop-up, that's perfect. Dev Airbnb on Rails Airbnb. All right. So that's fine. Then the next thing we have to do is create the Turbo Activity. 
So they just called it main activity. That's going to be another class inside of our main class folder. You can do new common class file and then just call it main activity. And I'll drop it in this main activity class and then I'm going to go through and import each of these things. So each of these classes I'm going to import. And then, okay, that looks good. We can move on to creating the web fragment. It says refers to the activity layout file, refers to the main session FOS fragment hosted in your layout file. Refer to the demo as an example. Don't forget to add your activity to your app's Android manifest XML file. Right. I don't know if I, since I did the no activity, uh, what that means is inside of Android manifest, there's no activity inside of application. And I think we need one of those. So what I can do is go over to the demo. See, we're already inside the demo. Uh, I just need to figure out. I don't even know where to find all the, like the, <laughs> the Android manifest file. I don't see it. Turbo demo. Oh, right up here. Source main Android manifest. Here we go. So look, they're using this activity, which we're going to have to change up a bit. But I'm going to put this inside of. I have to actually delete the ending slash. And then bring it down to a new line. There we go. And inside of there, we put the activity. But I have to change this name to our activity name. Oops. There we go. And then for the theme, we're going to use not the day and night. We have to use our local theme, which I don't even know if we have one. Oh, look, we do. So in res values, themes, we do have a theme. So I'm just going to use this name, theme.airbnb, just like that. Style slash theme.airbnb, the same one you're using on application. So I guess that's perfect. That looks good to me. And then remember, we still have to create that web fragment. That's the last class that we have to create. So if we go back to the quick start guide, it just looks like this. It's like two lines of code because we're not really getting fancy with it right now. So let's go back to the same folder that we've been putting our classes. I'm going to create a new call in class and I'm going to call it web fragment. And inside of web fragment, I'll just replace it with these two lines of code and then also import these classes. Just these two classes. All right. And that looks good. I think that actually might be it. So once you've created all those different classes, uh, we have our simple Android app. Perfect. So now I'm excited to test it out see if it works. So to do that, just press the play button. And we already have our Pixel phone. But we're good to go. We're going to test out Airbnb Android. See how it works. I'm really excited about this. Ooh, let me try to... Maybe I should move my head over to the other side. Woohoo! If you look at the bottom corner... The Gradle build is running, so I'm just gonna have to wait for that to load. Who knows how long that'll take since I cleared the caches. By the way, if you're having errors, uh, try to do what I did because that kind of helped. Oh, look at that! Oh, look at that! It loaded up the Android app. We actually see Airbnb, it looks good. We have our Airbnb app. So, the only thing I, I kind of talked about this in another video. But you see how we have two top bars, two, two nav bars? That's kind of weird. So to fix it, like really simply, it's because of the theme. So inside of your res folder, values theme. Uh, because the theme that we're using for our app is the dark action bar, that's what this is at the top. It has the same, this is the action bar. All you have to do is change it to no action bar, and then it won't use that top bar. 
See if we do no action bar, boom, problem solved. Now we still have the built-in top bar. That's why we see like, we'll still see a top bar. See the Airbnb Rails logo. And then it even has like a back button, which this is part of turbo, like because of the turbo request, it kind of adds in this back button, which might be helpful, it might not be. We can actually override that top bar too, which, cause look, we already have a nav bar, which kind of looks decent. So depending if you want like a fully native uh, top bar or not, which honestly in this video, I don't want it fully native. I don't want like this built in turbo top bar. And I haven't talked about how you can get rid of that, but that's kind of a big part of building like turbo native apps is just getting around some of these things that are built into the framework. So one thing is that top bar that adds like the back button, it adds the title, all that stuff. If we want to get rid of it, I'm actually like, that was kind of a pain to get through personally. And I do have an example on GitHub, but that was a pain when I was trying to figure out how to do that by myself. I think that took me like kind of some time and there wasn't really much documentation. I should probably make a full video on this, but inside of WaveCloud's Android, I do have the example of what I did. So let's go into the app code and take a look. So we have web fragment. Let's look at our web fragment. All right, I think this is what's happening. So you remember in our app, the web fragment just looks like two lines, but actually what I had to do is I had to put more stuff inside of the code. Should observe title changes, I set that to false. Let's go and try add that first and see what that does. So inside of our web fragment class, you'll notice right now it's just like a basic class. For some reason I have open keyword. I don't know if that's important. Let's try it without the open keyword. I'll just add the brackets and then add in this override should observe title changes. Now let's restart and see if there's any difference. Oh, so we still get the top bar, but now there's no title up there, but there's still like the back button. That's kind of funny. So I just want to get rid of, I remember like when I was first coding my, my wave clouds app, that was my first Android app I created. I remember this part. It was like so annoying that there was this top bar and I just wanted to get rid of it. So what I had to do is I had to override this on create view and then put in my own web fragment layout. That's what you have to do. And add this code override on create. We're also going to have to import this few classes. There we go. And then for the layout, see, we don't have a web fragment layout, but I'm going to quickly add that. So over in res layout, let's do a new layout resource file and I'm going to call it web fragment. And again, we're going to go to the code version with the four dots to view the code. And then I have to grab the code for that web fragment. I'm just going to take it right from the wave clouds example. So go to res layout web fragment. And I'm just going to take this example code and drop it in. And if we take a look at what it really is, it's just this simple constraint thing. So you always have the constraint as like a wrapper. And then we have an include layout turbo view. So it's literally just doing like the turbo view. And I think the important thing is the layout height, zero DP. I think that's just like making it not exist. I don't know. Anyways, I feel like this should work. Let's go back to web fragment. Everything looks good, although we're still getting error. Oh, because there was a few other classes. I didn't see and we're gonna have to import those. Whoa. Oops. There we go. Import. All right, now let's try this again. I'm gonna restart the server. Hey, and there's no top nav bar. So there we go. We're able to fix that issue pretty easily. I'm just trying to have this phone a little bit bigger. Cool. So we have Android. We have an Android app right now. Airbnb on Android. We don't have the annoying top nav bar anymore. Everything kind of looks normal. So yeah, I want to see. I wanted to check out if everything works. So first of all, does Stripe work on an Android app? I have no idea. So let's try to book. Boom. So we can book our appointment. 
But this is cool, it actually has the native select too. Although the styling on the check-in date looks kind of weird. It's like they forgot the border on the right side or something. Oh, I think I, I think it's because of the, the three-fourths width. Didn't we do something like that? So let's go back in the code. I'm going to open up Visual Studio. I have to open up this app, Airbnb. Whoops. And let's go over to the views, bookings. Wait, not bookings index. It's going to be listings, bookings. So the listings folder, then the bookings folder, the new page. Inside of here, I think we had some sort of width three fourths. Yeah, right here. I'm going to put that only for medium. And let's come back in here, do a nice refresh. So it looks like, well, uh, <laughs> the card got a little bit wider, I think. But the inputs are still looking pretty weird. So, oh, on the fields themselves, let's add a width full class. Class width full. Reload. Okay, that's, that looks fine, but why, do, why are we missing the border on the right side? That's so weird. We might just want to go fully custom styling. Rounded large. Border zero. Or no, border none. I actually forget how to do that. And then let's do BG gray 100. So we use some, we use the background to stick it away from the page. There we go. That looks kind of cool. That looks good enough. So we're not using a border anymore. We're actually just using like the color. Then we're going to select our date. So let's say like Friday, June 7th to the 14th. And I'm going to click book your stay. Which Wait, why is that not doing anything? <laughs> what the heck? So already we're kind of getting some sort of issue. Where I'm, I'm pressing book, it's making the request. It's completed 200 okay. Uh, but what else is supposed to happen? So I don't even know. Let's go into bookings controller, right? Let's look at the create and see what happens. It says if booking save, redirect to payment listing. Oh, we don't even have a user. <laughs> Wait, we literally don't have a user here. So we should lock down this controller. Probably this whole bookings controller. Let's try Let's make sure that you have to sign in first. So let's just do that right at the top. Before action, authenticate user. Think like that. Now let's reload. And boom, right away we get this message. You need to sign in. All right, so I'm actually going to create a new account. I hate how it scrolls the form out of view. Android, wait, why am I actually typing with the Android keyboard? <laughs> I'm gonna call myself Android Guy. There we go. I'm gonna click sign up. Boom, just like that. And now we go back to the booking page and I can actually book my reservation now. There we go, one week reservation. I'm booking it. Boom, no it did, it worked with Stripe. Look, popped up the form right there. $1,000, hey, that's not bad. So Android guy, four two four two. 24, 24. Just doing random information. So I don't have the webhooks listening right now, but I think it will still work. Wait, why did the... That was looking so weird. Okay, it did, look at this. Your booking has been confirmed. Check in on this date. So everything's working. Although that one, f it looked like on that page, like for some reason, the nav bar was like halfway down. That was really weird. Maybe I can recreate that. So let's go and let's just book another stay. Book your stay. 
So, I mean, I'm not seeing the error now, but it looks like maybe when we type, it, like, has some sort of glitch. I mean, not anymore. Yeah, I don't know. One thing is the... This notice kind of blocks the page. So, we might want to make that fade away after, like, a few seconds. But other than that, this app is looking really great. Looking really swaggy. I'm an owner. Like, everything's working, right? And it's looking good. So from here, there is a lot to do. Like, we can make this app way better. Probably the first thing that we might want to do is adding a bottom navigation bar. We can actually do that using a fully native bottom navigation bar. Or you could use one that we code inside of, like, from the website, inside of Rails. But I think a fully native bottom bar might be better. Now you might be thinking, how do we add that bottom bar? Like, how does that work, right? Well, I think we just add it inside of activity main. Because look, we have this fragment container view, but you could just drop your bottom navigation right underneath this and it would show up.